Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyid Ali Madan Admi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will discuss exercise 15.2, question number 47 from Thomas Calculus, 12th edition book. The statement of problem is sketch the region of integration, reverse the order of integration, and evaluate the integral. So, first of all, we will move towards sketching the region of integration. And then I will explain the second thing. And then I will move on the third step. In order to sketch the region of integration, we need some boundaries and these boundaries can be derived with the help of limiting values of our inner and outer variable. In this question, our inner variable is y and the limits of y are x to pi and our outer variable is x and limits of x are 0 to pi. So from limits of outer variable x, we have x equal to 0 and x equal to pi. x equal to 0 is equation of y-axis and x equal to pi is equation of vertical line which passes to the point x equal to pi. Similarly, for inner variable, we have the equation y equal to x and y equal to pi. Now, y equal to x is an equation of line which passes through ordered pairs where the value of x coordinate and y coordinates are same like 0, 0, 1, 1, pi, pi. I have, I have written here pi pi because pi is involved in our limits. Similarly, y equal to pi is an equation of horizontal line. As I have told you in class that in order to sketch the region of integration, always start with the dashed lines. You will mark x-axis and y-axis with a dashed line or a lead pencil. After that, if x-axis or y-axis is involved in your limit, then you can make it dark. Like here, x is not involved in our boundaries, but y x is involved in our boundaries, so I make it dark. Just like this. Look at this step again. In the beginning, you will mark x axis and y axis with dashes. Then, if any of the x's is involved in your boundaries, you will make it dark. Just like x equal to 0 is the equation of y axis, so I, I'm going to make it a dark line, just like this. Now, after marking this, this is our x-axis, y-axis, and their point of intersection origin. I'm going to mark the points pi and pi along x and y axis because I have to plot a vertical line, x equal to y, which passes to a point where the value of x axis is pi. The value of x is pi along x axis. See here? This line is for x equal to pi, a vertical line. Similarly, a horizontal line, which passes to a point where the value of y is pi along y axis. The equation of this line is y equal to pi. Then the intersection of this vertical and horizontal line and means this point is pi pi. Why I have indicated this point? Because I have to plot another line y equal to x, which passes the point 0, 0 and pi pi. 0, 0 means origin. So I have drawn a line and extend it from origin to pi and extend it. Please note that in order to plot a straight line, other than horizontal or vertical line, you need only two ordered pairs. Then after plotting all these four boundaries, I have marked them according to their boundaries. Equations, x equal to zero is equation for y-axis. Y equal to x is the equation of this line. Now, after plotting these all boundaries, you see that we have only one bounded region, this triangle. In the next step, I will highlight it. So this highlighted region is actually our region of integration, which is the requirement of our question in the first part. In the second part, we have to reverse the order of integration. Now, what is the reversal of order of integration or what is the process of reversing the order of integration? Reversing the order of integration means we have to change our inner variable as outer variable and outer variable as inner variable. Means in the process of integration, we will change our inner variable from y to x and our outer variable from x to y. Now, 
as I have reversed the order of integration, I need some new limits. I cannot simply interchange the existing limits because you know that the limits of inner variable may be constant, may be variable, but the limits of outer variable are always constant. In this case, if we try to switch the limits, then the limits of outer variable become variable due to x here. So we need some new limits from this region. In the next step, we will calculate the limits of inner variable with the help of arrow technique. What is this arrow technique? If x is your inner variable, you will pass an arrow. You will pass an arrow. Watch it. From left to right, you will pass an arrow from left to right in your region. This arrow enters from the boundaries x equal to 0 and exit the boundary y equal to x. So along these boundaries, you will calculate the value of x, which will provide you lower and upper limit. The entering point or the entering boundary will provide you lower limit and the exiting boundary will provide you upper limit. So the limits of x are 0 to y. This provides you new limits of your new inner variable x. For outer variable, we will check what is the range of your region along that particular axis. Along y-axis, your region starts at origin and ends at y equal to pi. So limits of y will be 0 to pi. So limits of y will be 0 to pi. So after calculating the limits, what I have done, I have changed the order of integration and evaluated the new limits according to our new change of variables. In the next step, we will evaluate this double integral. As you know, in order to evaluate the double integral, we will always solve the inner integral first and then on the outcomes of inner integral, we will apply outer integral. For this purpose, I have isolated the inner integral with the help of brackets and change its color so that you are focused here. So in the next step, I'm going to solve it. With respect to x, sine of y over y is constant. You can take it outside of the inner integral and we are left with only dx. In the next step, the integration of dx will be x for the limit 0 to pi. In the next step, I have applied fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. I have replaced x with y minus x with, I have replaced x with 0 for lower limit. Upper limit minus lower limit is called fundamental theorem of calculus. In the next step, will simplify y and y will be cancelled out and we are left with limit from 0 to pi sine of y dy. So in the next step, we will perform the integration of sine of y. The integration of sine of y is minus cos of y for the limits 0 to pi. In the next step, we have applied fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. By taking the negative sign outside, we get cos of pi minus cos of 0. Cos of pi is cos of cos of pi means cos of 180 is minus 1 and cos of 0 is 1. Please note that whenever you use pi as an angle, you will use its value in degree as 180 degree. In an angle, pi will be 180 degree and as a number, pi is 3.14 or 22 over 7. So after substituting the value, we will get our answer as 2. This concludes the third step of the video. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.